But what are the key benefits that can be achieved through shared services? And what are the key challenges in achieving them? Chris, what have you achieved? I think I, think I would categorise the key benefits um, two ways. And sometimes these overlap. Um, there are uh, key benefits in terms of quality enhancement, about improvement of resilience, about... Uh, now, what do you mean by these things? Quality enhancement, resilience? What do you well, for example, um, if you've got um, one internal auditor in your organisation, then he or she can only have a sort of a limited uh, a sort of breadth of experience in order to, to undertake that internal audit. If you have access to a team of internal auditors with a range of different experiences, then you have a much better quality of, uh, of uh, experience in terms of your support function. You also have a far more resilient one. It's not subject to absence or, and, and so forth. And that, I think, is a very good example of um, a sort of a critical mass type argument with regards to shared services. The other um, type of uh, argument is one about economies of, sc economies of scale. The larger an operation, the, 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 the smaller the per unit cost. And you can do that, I think the latter one is more uh, attuned to more transactional um, activities, a lot of ICT, um, a, a lot of the, the turnkey transactional like uh, invoice processing or payroll and things like that. They operate at a much more efficient level when you have scale um, attached to it. Now sometimes those things come together, um, but, uh, but often they, they fall into those two camps. Have we got scale, Tim? I mean, is there, I mean uh, you know, you're talking about Disney. I mean, how many employees has Disney got? Uh, if you include the characters, quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, worldwide, it's a vast, yeah. vast yeah. organisation, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Whereas yeah. actually most, I mean, the biggest university in the country is what, Manchester? Yeah, but if you, mm -hmm. take, if you take the sector, though, you're talking about a serious enterprise. That's why I say it's not an enterprise, but it is. If you, and I know colleagues here use the, the eight, nine billion or whatever numbers you use. It's a big, it's a big part. Yeah. And actually, the value it generates is far more than that. Because if you believe this is the innovation business, it's not. I see Pop Noodles has come back from China to Leeds now, so things are coming back. But this is not pot noodles, this is innovation, this is stuff that drives value and it's stuff that the country needs. So it's certainly big enough uh, and it's certainly, if you look at Janet, it's certainly big enough to support a, a world class asset like that, uh, which we couldn't have otherwise. So what's the value? I think the value is quite simple. It allows you to do things better, possibly things that you couldn't do on your own for lower cost. And, 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 th and some of them are back office and people like to say oh, back office, that's where we should go because that doesn't touch the mission. But I would suggest there are some real sacred cows in core mission that, that can be done as well. I'll, I'll give you one for research, which is high performance computing. That, that, is, that is an area where you have a lot of very clever but idiosyncratic people. They remind me a bit like the animators at Disney, that they, they try and say, oh, well, we have to be very special. We can only do it that way. I leave it for experts to judge that. But there are experts who say, actually, it's not quite as special. It can be bolt up and used. And consortia are coming together. There's one in the Midlands, there's one in the North, one in the Southwest, who are bringing that together. The, the real sacred cow, I think, is teaching and learning. And where some of, the, some of the opportunities for learning that comes through shared services. So for example, and I'm not an expert in pedagogy, but I do remember going to 400 people lectures on physiology when I was at university and uh, frankly they were churning out the same old notes that they've done every year. Well, there are far more efficient ways of doing that and they don't even have to be done from within your own institution. They can be acquired. So you, so you were talking about how do you do that. Well, you acquire that as an asset. It's, it's, it's something you use and you wrap around the own specialness of your institution. And that's where there are serious implications mm. about A, you're upping the quality in my view and you get the learning people will tell you there, there are much better ways of learning than people standing up in front of 400 people. Uh, but it's, it's going to be highly disruptive to the classical model of some universities. Andrew, but there, it's littered, the path is littered with failures, isn't it? I mean, from the attempts to create, I mean, you'd think something really simple, like the fire service, do you remember that in 2000, whenever yes, it was, four yes. or five or something? <laughs> yes. It'd be really simple, wouldn't yes. it? I mean, what do you do? You dial 999 and then they go and put the fire out. Yes. A complete failure and it just stopped. Yes, I mean, and, and people like John Seddon and the Vanguard uh, movement will, will document these failures. You have Southwest One, I could embarrass numerous organisations, but perhaps that, that's not the case here. But the things that but, Tim is talking about, surely aren't they fraught with these institutional, I mean the autonomy question, the competitive question? Yeah, yes, they are. And uh, we should remember what we're here for. As educators, we're here to enhance our students' lives and to provide higher education for them. And I'll come back to the title of the event again, Shared Services to Enhance the Student mm -hmm, Experience. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, we're accountable to, to the students whom we serve. 
You know, it's their judgment on us in things like the National Student Survey, which will be our, our legacy and, and, and what we're remembered for. In my long and diverse career, I've had the privilege of working in highly rated universities and at universities which um, had some challenges, shall we say, and uh, universities which had very poor ratings in things like employability, student engagement, um, student outcomes, and students which, and universities which were very highly rated. And I think that's what, we have, that's what we're about at the end of the day. Yes, we have to be efficient, and shared services can give us greater visibility of the processes that we have, give greater accountability, give us great, a better handle on what we're trying to do, give us better cost control, but at the end of the day, we have to not compromise and ultimately enhance the student experience.